Hello, this is Dancing Bird, the Autistic Prince. And this is uh, Koala. I'm, I'm just Tom. No titles. <laughs> How do you follow up from an introduction like that? But yeah, this well, is... I mean, I could go. I, I am, I am Prince of the Universe. <laughs> Everything the light touches is my king. <laughs> well, after uh, I think it should be noted that after our pilot, you was uh, pleasantly surprised by how much feedback we got. Yeah, I was. We got loads of feedback, and to be honest, I expected mm, 10, 20 views, but we got. I think we stand at like nearly 130. Yes, it so, was. I did check. It was just under 130 views, which in a space of seven days is quite impressive. I think it's quite impressive anyway. Yeah, really. it is. It's it's better than what we hoped. So from me and Dancing Bear, Irvine, <laughs> uh, thanks from like the bottom of my heart. Abs- like, absolutely, means the world. absolutely. Thank you for any feedback and... Yeah, I really appreciate this, you know, putting into consideration this was, I don't want to use the terminology poorly plans, but this was like uh, spur of the win moments doing this project. So to get so much feedback in such uh, a brief moment in time is genuinely gratifying for both of us, I think it's fair to say. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I think I think that's fair to say. And I wouldn't say poorly planned, I'd just say we... we um... We had a direction and we weren't sure where we were going with it. Yeah, definitely. Which I quite like random ramblings of rambles. Yeah, we were just, it's bizarre because we were just having a cosy conversation um, just before we decided to record and remembered that we've got a podcast today. We were talking about the uh, Batman versus Superman. The, yeah, uh, and the movies they were based on. Yeah, so I mean, so I, I was in, genuinely enjoying listening to Tom, but you was you was talking about in it was did you say the animated series or the comics? Yeah, so the Batman v Superman movie, Dawn of Justice, <laughs> was an absolute slog fest of what two out nearly three hours. Yeah, I think wasn't there a director's cut that was ridiculously long? Yeah, um, which I, I only ever saw the film probably twice in my life. So see, I'm actually. As weird as it sounds, I'm actually against director's cuts. <laughs> because if you can't be asked showing it me when I go and watch it in the movie, clearly you didn't want me to see it. Don't try and fix it in post. Nah. Oh, you take dear. you take your sorry ass for a movie and you show me all of it or you just piss off. It's funny you should say that because going off subject ever so slightly... There is no subject. Uh, <laughs> um... I was watching the deleted scenes See, from I'm, I'm uh, fine with, the Hallows. I like the deleted last Harry Potter scenes. film. See, I've I've not watched all the Harry Potter films. Oh, right. well, I best not say it then, in case for potential spoilers. No, you can spoil it. Oh, I'm not right. right bothered. <laughs> well, basically, there was a deleted scene. It was Harry's last encounter with the Dursleys. Um, Who were the Dursleys? The, the uncle and aunt that uh, reluctantly brought Harry up. Before oh right, he got yeah. His letter. It, it shows the last scene that he he will probably ever be with them again. And it was a quite a bittersweet moment because there was a realisation. I'm trying to describe the context, uh, everybody, to Tom. But basically, it was it was pretty obvious that it was showing the audience that this was the last time Harry was probably ever going to see his aunt, his uncle, his cousin ever again. There was a dark wizard rising. The world was a dangerous place. Yeah. And they had to keep even them safe. And basically, it showed that a couple of films earlier, a couple of books earlier, that Harry actually saved Dudley's life. I don't know if you know this. He saved Dudley's life from the Dementors. I only know this pretty well because I've been watching Harry Potter's. Uh, gave him a binge watch this past few this past week. He, Tom's looking at me bewildered. See, I got to Harry Potter. Oh. how many are there? Seven. Uh, eight. Eight. F- eight films. I seven got, books. I, I got to. See Six. Just Ooh. after the Goblet of Fire, I didn't watch that last two-parter. Ah, right then. Then, uh, yeah, but basically, cut a long story short, it was it, it sort of showing you that the Dursleys actually cared for Harry to a certain degree, without going into too much detail. And even though they were nasty to him throughout his childhood, there was still that certain unspoken love, I want to say, if I want to be bold about it, that his cousin obviously had for Harry and potentially even his aunt and uncle. See, the thing I got from his aunt and uncle and what I sort of started to look at when I watched the movies years later yeah, is, did they blame Harry for the death? 
Because who's... Are they the mum or they, dad? They didn't blame Harry for the death, no. Um, I mean, they gave him that awesome you, bedroom. Yeah. Which... which <laughs> uh, uh, you're laughing. Uh, if anyone wants a little bit more context to that, when the first Harry Potter movie came out and he had that little tiny bedroom under the stairs, <laughs> we lived in a house with a cupboard under the stairs and I thought that bedroom was the coolest looking thing ever because I wouldn't need much stuff and I could just roll out of bed and go and get cereal. So I begged my parents if I could have that as a bedroom. Did, did you succeed in such an endeavour? No, they thought I was an utter. <laughs> this was the same Christmas I asked for a straight jacket. Oh, wow. Wow. So, no, going back in the conversation a little bit, yeah, that was a deleted scene, which I hope they would have kept because it would have been quite a conclusive end to to an arc. But did they ever put that in, like, a uh, director's cut? Or Probably anything? did, but I've never actually bought the final cut director's cut. But I, I only stumbled upon this particular deleted scene by chance because I just found it, happened to find it on YouTube. But, um, no, I've never seen it included in the, with the film intact. So, who knows? There's probably a copy out there because that's how uh, the producers make more money. Look at the Lord of the Rings. I've got the extended edition of Lord See, of the Rings. See, them I don't mind, but that's that's like nerd royalty there. Oh, you know? yes, definitely, definitely. I stroke But when it comes with deleted it. scenes, sometimes there is, there is a sombre thought that goes through my head because one of my favourite movies of all time, sci-fi related, or I suppose mystical, is Highlander. You ever seen it? Yes. I there can be only yeah. one. Do yeah. you know all the deleted scenes for that were lost in a warehouse fire? I didn't know. So you will never see the deleted scenes. And there is a deleted scene where um, Clancy Brown's character, I can't remember his name, the villain. I don't remember the names, but yeah, I do, yeah. I do remember a villain. So I think it's There's the a deleted guy. scene where it's really, um, would have been nice to see because he goes to fight an immortal in New York City who uses two swords. Right. And apparently comes out on top. And that would... Because everyone else in the Highland universe uses one. Right. I mean, some use axes and that you, in the TV series. You seem series. quite well versed in this. Are you a big fan of Highlander? I am. I mean, it's the movie that gave us Queen's It's a Kind of Magic. Yeah. <laughs> very true. And who wants to live forever? And... Uh, oh, did that come from Highlander yeah. as well? I know um, it's a kind of magic. Um... Highlander... When the people approached um, Queen to make music... Yeah. And Princes of the Universe. Yeah, Princes of the Universe. Uh, originally, apparently, it was either the whole band or Freddie Mercury took such a liking to the script and the, the characters and stuff that they, instead of writing one song, they wrote three or four, including in the movie there is a version of New York, New York by Frank Sinatra sung by Queen. Wow, <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think know that, that. That's that's one that goes over everyone's head, and it's hard to track down sometimes. Bloody Not on any hell. of their albums, but yeah, it's in it's in Highlander. Fair enough. I wanted to go back in the conversation that are ever faithful, and we not now know we have an audience. Yeah, we genuinely have an audience. Uh, possibly 120 so, people, or just like two people watching it over and over again. Well, it's definitely one? not us. <laughs> but no, <laughs> no, but, no. Um, something that piques my curiosity. Now, as you as you as you know, uh, you've been my friend for what? Ten years. Yeah, ten, eleven. Years. I am a massive worst time of my life. <laughs> I am a humongous Doctor Who fan, and Koala Tom, whatever his preference. He's really, he he's really Tom. not lying about being a humongous Doctor Who fan. Yeah, pretty much. He's got much. a blue suitcase. I'm pretty sure he only got it because, like, it looks like a TARDIS. And, and a little TARDIS somewhere. Oh, there you go. I then. think ev- I've got a little TARDIS. I've got. Everyone's got a little TARDIS. I've got that one filled with like cards. Yeah. Anyway, you said something that piqued my curiosity about five minutes ago. You don't like Christopher Eccleston. Please elaborate. I just didn't like... I liked... Did you not like his portrayal of the Doctor? When he, when he like came him? back... Yes, you look at the picture when, I've when... got of him. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just like a six-foot-tall, fully nude Christopher. No, it, it's just like a canvas of every single Doctor. But, no, when Doctor Who came back, obviously, I, I knew it from watching it like on reruns with my parents or... Uh, the movie with Paul McGann. Paul McGann. Um, so when Christopher Eccles came back, is it Eccles or Eccleston? Christopher Eccleston. Yes. Yeah. I know it, it was a bit surreal seeing this like nearly skinned, angry Northern bloke <laughs> stomp around as Doctor, and he he had some good scenes. He had some good episodes, like. Um, was he the, not the Doctor to you though? The was one he... that always sticks in my head and everyone else's head. Yeah. There's one episode in particular. Garlic. It, it's the first one 
with Captain Jack. Are you uh, my mummy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, when that episode came on, this go on. I was genuinely hiding behind the sofa. Were you genuinely? It I was terrifying. It was. It was terrifying to me. But no, I'm... I just when I think he could have stood to be the Doctor a bit longer. There's really, the reason why he left after but, the first season, though, I don't know if you know, but go on. I know he didn't. Was it he didn't like the character or something? And what always sticks with me is when an actor or someone gets a part for such a beloved, iconic character, be it like Doctor Who or a captain in like Star Trek or Star Wars or something. Like you have a part in Star Wars, Harrison Ford. Why don't you like it? Does Harrison Ford not like he Star Wars? He hates. Being, I, th- I can understand it to I a certain degree because he might have put people. The only you from Star Wars. I think know, the might... the only sci-fi movie he actually really likes is um that he's in is Blade Runner. He doesn't. I don't think he's a big sci-fi fan. No, I can understand that to a certain degree. Obviously, if you're an actor, especially if you're mainstream and you're well known, you are going to be part of certain projects of a certain genre that's not necessarily your forte, that's not necessarily your go-to thing. Mm. That Yeah, I can, I can totally understand that, but at the same time, though, you got to put into consideration, including Christopher Eccleston, very, very similar argument, as you will, or point I'm about to establish, is how many times you got to put into consideration, now, I'm not justifying Christopher Eccleston, because I can add another, shed some light into your argument as well, but how many times have fans gone on, oh, it's Han Solo from Star Wars. I don't know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? you got to put that into that, consideration. That, that would get annoying. Yeah, and, it, it could be, it'd be extremely redundant. But um, and Doctor Who fans and mm. just fans, many fandoms, they're quite fanatical. Yes, like, yes. Extreme so, is the correct word yeah, to use. Fanatical. Zealous. <laughs> Zealous. Crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... Like, I mean, we'd all... Do, like, if I was walking down the road and you saw, like... I don't know, like... David Tennant... Be, oh, my God! Oh, yeah. I'd completely mark like, out. I and would he's like, yes, boy. yes, I played yeah. the Doctor. <laughs> oh, no, I know you from Jessica Jones. Fantastic series. You, you, have you watched it yet? I have seen it, yes. My brother he's, got me into it not long ago, He's an amazing villain in it. Yeah. After that, it goes downhill when he, he's no longer in it, but... Um, I don't... I'm still... Uh, a couple of episodes in season one, so there was a new show that he was in, though David Tennant. It's re- it's fairly recent with Martin Sheen. Good omens. That's the one. Yeah, I'm about two episodes in. I've just literally just started watching it, and oh my god, it looks brilliant. I have an impression of it. I have a thought on it. I did love it, and then when I started thinking about it more critically. I have a very unpopular opinion about it. What is your unpopular opinion? See, now, I love Terry Pratchett. Growing up with um, a real bad form of dyslexia, Terry Pratchett is a really easy read. They're small books. They're proper British humour. What is it? The nice and proper uh, prophecies of A. Nutter. Right. In Good Omens. So you can tell it's got proper British humour in that show. Uh, Neil Gaiman, he's a fantastic writer. Because he does supernatural worlds or mystical worlds. I in am mo- familiar with a lot of Neil Gaiman w- games. In the works, modern actually. day. Yeah, absolutely. But my thing with Good Omens is a show, and obviously Terry Pratchett is dead. Yeah. God rest his soul. Unfortunately. And yeah. one of his things was he never, ever wanted Hollywood to get hold of any of his rights because he didn't trust them. Understandably so. And he even hated TV shows being made. Did he? Yes. When he did, he got full creative control. So this was instead has Neil Gaiman overseeing everything. But my thing with Good Omens is if you had someone else playing uh, Crowley and um, the angel Martin Sheen. Yeah, yeah, Martin Sheen's character. I can't actually remember his name. Burning Man, I'm only two episodes in, but go on. It wouldn't be a very good show. They make it. Without them, it's quite a... Yeah, you've actually got a very valid point there, to be honest with you, because storyline-wise, it's not... There's a story to it, but it's not very... What's the, it's quite superficial, I want to say. It's not that. It's, it is a good show. It's a good storyline. I just... They make it. They have such amazing chemistry, those two. They have such... Do you reckon it's the chemistry between the two actors yeah, that, yeah. Are, that are, that are making but if it you, what it is? It's one of them things. It's without those two, the show would fall apart because 
All the other people in it, they can act, yeah, but they're quite boring. Yeah. Anyway, we got incredibly sidetracked then. We, we got did. from Good Omens to why your dislike of Christopher Eccles. No, no, you sort of you sort of explained why. Well, I mean, we didn't. We did the thing where we jumped, didn't we? Yeah. Christopher Eccleston was in Doctor Who, and yeah, then I look said, at oh, his if picture. You, if, <laughs> if you see David Tennant, and David Tennant was in Jessica Jones, yeah. and Jessica Jones, and David Tennant, David Tennant is in Good Omens. Please forgive us, ladies and gentlemen. We will do this. It's not intentional. It's just instinctive why we get or. Um, Specifically, I, I suppose I get more sidetracked than anyone. But anyway, yeah, but the sidetracking makes it. That's yeah. that's kind of what I like because we just ramble. Yeah. Um, Christopher Eccleston. Look, I want you to look at his great. I can't even see him. I've got he, pull, oh, there he's he is. Next I can't believe I, I, I can't believe I missed that. I want you to look in his eyes. He looks like it, a caveman, <laughs> doesn't he? But look, just look at him compared to every other doctor. He stands out. He's got like. Damn near skinhead, like angry face, and I get he was supposed to be the angry one, wasn't he? Yeah, he was fresh the, out the, of the the, the post. The, have I, it's not even my words, but how I've heard it being described, he's the post traumatic doctor because he might not have been the doctor that experienced the time war, but he's definitely the doctor that had to pick up the pieces after. Now that isn't even me explaining it. I that was a fellow Doctor Who fan I heard explaining it, and what a better I can't I cannot fathom. Yeah, because nor think of a better way to explain. I, I really Eccleston's liked some doctor. of his episodes. I yeah. liked like one of my favourite is when the now famous aliens in it, the Slovene, show up. Yeah, they and... sort of dropped them after a while. I've not we've not yeah. seen them until he sings. Um, you know the great story up with with um, Downing Kane. Street and <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that was and vinegar. And, <laughs> and Binny. but the bit in that episode that I always remember, yeah. besides Harriet Jones, MP, yeah, um, is uh, the pig. Yeah, because this, like, it, for those who haven't seen the adverts, the aliens basically they make like a, a crappy <laughs> spaceship that crashes into London, and they genetically mutate a pig so it walks on two legs, and they pull it in like an adorable little spacesuit, and it wakes up and it runs down a hallway, and these soldiers show up and just see. Oh, there's an alien running out of set. Shoot it. And the doctor comes around the corner. And isn't he screaming like, don't shoot, don't shoot. It's just scared. Yeah. And then he goes on the floor and he's crouching. And obviously he's he's a good actor. Yeah. And he's there and he's got tears in his eyes and he's crying. And he looks at them and he gets so angry. And he's like, it was just scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I know which scene you're on about and in that, particular. And that, that scene stuck with me. Yeah, absolutely. But why? Why are you not keen on him though? Um, it's just all the stuff afterwards because he basically he tried bad mouthing Doctor Who and all that, didn't he? I don't know about the bad mouthing Doctor Who. This is the. I'll tell you what. But there's so much news out there. I don't know, and it was years ago. I haven't really. Well, I heard it. it from his own mouth, so take of it what you will. It's on YouTube, and if you if for those listeners out there who's mad on Doctor Who, if you type in why Christopher Eccleston left Doctor Who, he actually says so himself. For some reason, the way he describes it, now he doesn't mention the name, but I know exactly who he's referring to, and I'm sorry if anyone who happens to be slightly famous, who's happened to work in the BBC, listens to this, I am sorry, but it's time for the truth. Yeah. Also, if you are from the BBC, (laughs) could we get a sponsor? (laughs) Christopher Eccleston didn't get on with the showrunner. Well, no, he did originally, but he had a serious falling out with the showrunner, Russell T. Davis. I know that name. You probably do. He's worked on Queer as Folk, The Second Coming, which he asked Christopher Eccleston to be the uh, main character in that. He's pretty much the main reason why Doctor Who returned in 2005. So if you ever wondered why it came back to television, folks, it's because of Russell T. Davis, the godfather, and and I'll use this title, the godfather of television writing. He's not... A, a guy out there, especially who's had the grace to work in the BBC, in my personal Did he write some opinion, of Sherlock? No, that was Stephen Moffat. All oh, right. Yeah, he's a good writer, but not as good as Russell T. Davis. Just saying. Mm. Personal Back opinion. Off. Personal opinion. That's my humble opinion. Also the truth. No, it's my personal humble opinion. Just to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, anyway, go on. <laughs> no, but pretty, he basically masterminded all the story arcs from... Uh, Chris Freckleson's tenure as the Doctor to David Tennant's so all the, uh, yeah, there's no, for lack of better terminology, all the story arcs you see, the Vault Saxon, the Bad Wolf, the, there was a couple of others that, that I just can't remember, but basically all the hints and suggestions that, were, that he used to write in uh, throughout his seasons was uh, Russell T. Davis's idea. 
And he left the same time David Tennant left Doctor Who. And I think that was 2009, 2010 time. So, yeah. If you enjoy any particular story arc, storyline in any of the seasons prior to Matt Smith's tenure to Doctor Who, you've got Russell T. Davis to thank for that. See, with Doctor Who, I watched all the way until David Tennant. I watched most of Matt Smith. And then I went off it, and I basically didn't see any of Peter Capaldi's. See, I was the other way around. See, I don't know why. I I, I, I think I was going through a phase, um, especially when Matt Smith was the Doctor, that I just didn't watch Doctor Who as religiously as I used to. And then I just got recently back into it when uh, Peter Capaldi was there. So it looks like we had the opposite effect, to be honest with so, you. So we're talking about Doctor Who, I remembered something, because I saw news recently. Yes, with an interview I with, know what you're going to bring up. With yeah, Billy Piper, and she wants, she hated um, one part of her exit story or something. Yeah, she hated and... the, way, the, the way that basically, do you remember the season four finale where the Doctor ended up having a clone? Do you remember that? Was the clone the woman? No, the clone was... He, 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 basically, the ending to season four was it was a conglomeration of Torchwood, Sarah Jane Smith. They all got together to fight the Dalek and menace. And they went into that other dimension. Yeah, yes. yes. Do you remember? And, yeah, and, I do, I do. And the ending to Rose Tyler's character, who Billy Piper played, was... she. Spoiler alert, you know, so if you don't want to know, please skip ahead um, about a minute or so, probably two or three minutes. But basically, Billy Piper's character, Rose Tyler, had a little uh, uh, conclusive ending for the character. And she could live happily ever after with the Doctor's clone, who was also now human and aged normally like a human being. But yeah, there's been a bit of backlash the, uh, for the past few days that Billy Piper hated the ending, I believe. Mm, and she also apparently wants a dark comedy version of, like, that show. Yeah. Oh, see... I mean, Ma- Doctor Who's not above spin-offs, like you just said. No, Torchwood. absolutely not. But there's a few spin-offs I would have liked from Doctor Who. Yeah, like, but... Like, do you remember on. that episode where they go on that planet and it's all underground and they clone the Doctor and it comes out as a woman? Yes, one of my favourite episodes, Doctor's daughter. Actually. Whatever happened to her? Because I thought they were going to well, be a spin-off. here's the thing. Now, I'm going to say something that can be quite controversial. So, again, my faithful listeners, if you happen to disagree on this... Please, please, please... Argue in the comments. Argue in the comments, we yeah. Do in, we do, in, we or, do actually enjoy feedback yeah, and comments. Yeah, absolutely. Like Dave last week. Yeah, hello, Dave, if you're hey, listening. Dave. <laughs> but anyway, going back into the conversation, it would have been good then if they had a spin-off idea then, you know, mm. uh, a couple of weeks or a couple of months after that particular episode would have got heard. Would it be successful now? No, because it Probably not, now, because, yeah, because they've waited too or long. would it be successful now because now we're used to a woman doctor? Yeah, no, I, it might be, it might be, but personally, from what I've seen as uh, from personal experience, see, this is what how, why people misinterpret me, um, and I, and I, and, I, and I, when I say people, I just speak about people in general. When I hear an idea, I think people the way I, the, the way people interpret when I say something's a bad idea, I'm not necessarily instigating that the entire concept is bad. A lot of ideas tend to be only good when the timing's right. Now, I imagine a lot of listeners are listening to me now with confused expressions on their faces. No, because I I get that as well. Now, I've got... Sorry to cut you off there, but I've got a very valid point. Back to the future. Now, I've I've got a question for you. Sorry about that. Could you say Back to the Future would be as equally as successful if it got released today? Well, no, because everyone that's in it would be old now. Or in well, no, do you know what I mean? If the concept Come on, Marty! To... <laughs> but the concept of Back to the Future, good idea, but would it be as good? No. Do you know what I'm trying to get at? But go it's on. too much to down now, but how there. many time travel shows and things are based on Back to the Future and Doctor Who? And... Ex- yeah. It's like yeah. saying, would Elvis be as good as he is if he came out now instead of back then? Well, if he didn't come out back then, we wouldn't have rock now, so probably. Yeah, very well, we true. Well, we wouldn't. We would, because there would still other artists around like it. But you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's like, some things that didn't do well back in the day would do much better now. What, well, like, if you had to give a, uh, an example, what what would you say? If you if you think a, a particular TV show would be more successful if it got released today than it would, say, 20, 30 years ago, do you have any, th- any in particular? Or... Ooh, um... 
<laughs> no. I mean, but there, there were some that were probably too ahead of their time. Or... I would say certain shows, especially within um, British TV shows, because they just didn't have the money, yeah. as America did... Um, certain shows such as I, like, I, I think I was speaking to you about it not many people know what this is but a show called Blake 7 I feel would have been a lot more successful if it got released today Blake 7 is what I know the name but I cannot think of anything about it basically it's called... but I grew up watching like basically whatever my dad watched on TV so I, I was growing up watching like old but, yeah shows, go on what or... did you actually grow up with I, like... we used to like uh, sci-fi stuff like what was on the sci-fi channel and stuff. so I grew up watching things like Sanctuary I don't know if you I watched watch Sanctuary that. yeah that was with forgot her name Amanda Tapping I want to yeah, say oh Amanda Tapping <laughs> do you like Amanda oh. Tapping <laughs> um fuck's <laughs> sake <laughs> do you like Amanda as an actress I mean I don't is she British right um she I think she herself is now Please correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. I can't remember if she was... Um, I think she's Canadian, I want to say. Oh, God, I'm going to get so much shit in the comment section. Although I do know that her grandmother was English. Now Tom's about to look it up on Google. I suppose I should have done the same. But, yeah, it's, I think I... Watch this. She's probably something. She's probably got a completely different nationality. But uh, we will find out as... Uh, my colleague is looking it up, but basically, I know for a fact Amanda Tapping's grandmother is English. So yeah. And uh, what else? Oh, things like uh, was it Special Unit Nine or Special Unit Five or something? Warehouse? No, I'm thinking. Of yeah, Warehouse Center. Thirteen. I did. I watched. I loved. I want it back. Why is it gone? What happened to Warehouse Thirteen? Because I never was that much into it. It did, it had a definitive ending. It, it did it. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. But if, if anyone wants to watch a good sci-fi show, um, Warehouse 13 is... It was a spin-off of uh, Tom called Eureka, wasn't no, it? No, it was... I think it was supposed to be set in the same universe because it was also made by the sci-fi channel. Right. So Warehouse 13, sometimes the characters from that were in the background of a town called Eureka and a town called Eureka characters were sometimes in Warehouse 13. Mm, a town called Eureka dealt with like um, science problems, and Warehouse Thirteen was all the mystical problems, and it was really good, and it it had oh, it was so good. Oh, I I never uh, I try, I've I've seen of I've seen all of Town Called Eureka because my mum's a massive fan, but uh, no, I can't say I got into Warehouse Thirteen through my own, put my you know I probably missed out on that one. So it's it's definitely worth a watch. I mean, because sci-fi, they bless them, they tried to replace it with the librarians. Was that any good? It had like it seemed like it had half the budget and all day. Yeah. I mean, you had the movies, but you didn't have the um. Yeah, Amanda Tappan's Canadian. Yay! What a guess. English Canadian, but I mean, I also grew up watching the shows, the legends <laughs> that are. <laughs> Those shows that will always be loved and probably shouldn't be. What's that? Xena, Warrior Princess and Hercules. Again, my mum and dad were massive fans of that. Um, I did like Andromeda, though. Do you remember that? Andromeda, I liked. I did Andromeda enjoy, was enjoy one of my favourite. Yeah, I did like that. I mean, see, the, st the concept of Andromeda was pretty cool. The acting wasn't always brilliant. No, but, but... Andro that concept has been done so many times, like... A ship that's been adrift for so many years, and the crew yeah. is like, like preserved. Like from home, a lone ranger, you know and that type he, of feel it's, to it's, it. He wakes up and he's a man out of time. And, yeah, you know things like that. But very, it was if if if, if you pardon the uh, euphemism here, it was life on Mars before life on Mars. If you know what I mean by that description, yeah. you know the whole a man or a person out of his time concept. I mean, that didn't really get truly explored until Sam Tyler's Life on Mars, which is one of the best shows that the BBC's ever produced, in my I humble mean, opinion. Yeah, but Sam Sorry, Tyler's got nothing on DCI Gene Hunt. No. <laughs> <laughs> Please describe uh, the character Gene Hunt for those right. who may not be aware of him. I think you, well, you'll be better off describing his character than most. Imagine uh, you're in your school playground and there's this really, really badass kid. Boisterous. <laughs> Boisterous. Loud. He could probably kick the shit out of anyone. <laughs> you know, you want to make this guy your friend. 
And then out of the corner, Gene Hunt comes along, and he's even cooler than this guy, and he makes that guy his little bitch. <laughs> that is Gene Hunt. He's got a he's got a spoiler on his official police car, yeah. and he, he's it's just ah. Oh, I, I bet you can Amazing. go on YouTube and just type in Gene Hunt best bits. Yeah, I am a big. F- I, I'm not just saying this to just jump on the bandwagon or just put money on a winning horse here. I, for many many years now, I, I'm a huge fan of Phil Glenister. For those who are not aware, he portrayed like Gene me. Hunt. Hmm? I just know him as Gene Hunt. He's, he's called, the-, <laughs> the problem is he's never going to escape that role. No, he which, isn't. It's sad in some if, aspects. If you but- if you were an actor. Would you want to get like typecast or like known as just one character? See, I'm like, quite down to work. Harrison so... Ford is always going to be Han Solo or Indiana Jones. Yeah. David Tennant's always going to be the Doctor. Gene yeah. Hunt is always going to be Gene Hunt. Mark Hamill's always going to be Luke Skywalker. Well, my general, he's the Joker to me. Is he the Joker? F- See, this is interesting for me because obviously you're quite well versed. We, we we sort of established this last week. You're very well versed. But, you know, to a lot of people, Mark Hamill is Luke Skywalker. To a lot of other people, he is well, the Joker, obviously. To you, when you think of Mark Hamill, do you instantly think of Luke Skywalker first or do you think of the Joker first? I think of the Joker because Luke Skywalker, he even admits he wasn't using his full potential because Mark Hamill actually wanted to be a voice actor. Right. And he he was always doing voices. And he... If you've watched something or were growing up in like the 90s, early 2000s, or you've been to see a movie and there's a voice in the background, chances are Mark Hamill might be... Chucky. He's the voice of Chucky in a new movie. I didn't know that. I honestly didn't know that. Yeah. And he's... I watched Thing with him and he says he loves doing it because he can do all these voices. And what he does is... um, if there's a line like, uh, are we having fun yet? He will record it like eight, nine times in different tones and just give them all so he doesn't know which ones they're going to pick. It could be like, are we having fun yet? Are we having fun yet? Are we having fun yet? You know, so he doesn't know if they're going to go for like a sinister sound in one or a wow. happy sound in one. So Ooh, even when he, when he watches a movie, he doesn't know. Yeah, no, fair but enough. But he's... if. If you've watched anything animated, played a game or anything, and you've heard the Joker, you've heard Mark Hamill, the voice of Luke Skywalker. I don't know how to react to that. I'm not going to lie to you. That was uh, now, a huge amounts of information. <laughs> all I want to do is now watch Star Wars, but someone's put the Joker <laughs> on every scene. <laughs> Little T, yeah. I am your father. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. There was we 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 sort of name dropped him in uh, in the comment section. Thank you ever so much for doing that. But when we was talking about Disney last week, um... we did get a few things wrong. But in fairness, we were just rambling, and there were facts all over the place. Yeah, I, I don't want to go over it again because it would take up too much time. <laughs> no, um, but what I what I do want to bring up is uh, one of the people in the comment section. I don't know if he'll appreciate us bringing up his name. We already have done once. Um, Dave, but Dave, Dave, yeah, he's fucking. His name's Dave, <laughs> but anyway, he um he brung up that what was it? Three of the five biggest selling movies are Disney. Was it something no, along them lines? Uh, three of the five in the last, I think it's last couple of years, um, to reach a billion or something, are Disney movies. Now to have three out of five, that is um that's saying a lot for the company. That's quite impressive. Uh. But at the same point, if I, when it comes to greatest movies of all time, I reached, uh, um, I was talking to you about it before, I looked at Empire's official list for top 100 movies of all time. This is nothing to do with money, this is just like what they think, the best movies of all time with votes, and obviously Empire is quite a big movie themed magazine. Absolutely, yeah. And now... I get everyone's list is supposed to be personal. Of you like your favourite movies of all time. Because someone out there's favourite movie is something I would find atrocious. Yeah, but true. at the same point Mad Max with Tom Hardy, when it came out, I have seen so many things now saying 
in like 20 years, this is going to be a classic. And it's on like greatest <laughs> movies of all time. It was number 30. It came ahead of Schindler's List, I think. Wow. Now, without being too controversial, as you would pull it, did someone else watch a different movie than me? Because that was a slog. That was like one of the shittest films I've ever seen. Never seen it. They so... drive all the way forward. He's got like three lines in the film, Tom Hardy. <laughs> Max. <laughs> He grunts a couple of times. They steal something. They go all the way to the other side of a map in a straight line. In a desert. And then they turn around and they go all the way back. And that's it. That's wow. like the movie in a nutshell. There's a bit in the middle where they meet old people. and I am flabbergasted. They, they don't even... I don't even think they do many callbacks to the original movies. But I don't know. I haven't seen them in like 20 years. But yeah. I wouldn't say that was a classic. Like... For me, I would rather sit there and watch... Oh, God, I, I have much more enjoyment. Maybe I wasn't the target demographic, you know. I'm just Probably I'm just not. a really nerdy guy that likes sci-fi and fantasy, so Mad the, Max maybe weren't for me. What you know? is Mad Max if you had to put it in a genre? I don't, I've heard the name. I, I genuinely don't know anything about it. Call me an idiot. Post-apocalyptic... World. Like... So of all the people, all the characters, all the wonderful The world is, is, is basically a, a, a desert. I think it's the ozone layer gave out and baked to the world. and they're right. all, it's The first movie is actually before the collapse. Like, the world is collapsing, but they're still green around. He's got a fan. It's I think it's Mel Gibson's very first movie. He's very young in it, and he's actually a cop. Right, I'm with you. Because when people think Mad Max, all they think is a devil. Like, devil? Uh, Get my D's mixed up. It's the, um, the desert. Right. But no, the first movie, it was all lush and green. Right. But the thing with the Mad Max remake is they brought back the dude that played the original villain. They brought him back. Right. And now in the original, he does die. Pretty sure. But, um... No. Did someone else watch... Like, please, if anyone wants to, like... You know, I say it, anything. This film got a lot of positive criticism. It got loads. It won, it won loads of awards. It won loads of things. But I just... Even though I love... Sci-fi, and I love post-apocalyptic movies, and the only sort of sci-fi I tend to stay away from is time travel, just because sometimes I really don't like it. Understandable. Um, like Doctor Who, time travel, I like. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You try and change it, you're going to get like... You're going to probably cause the... There's actually a word for that. They call it... Um, a lot of creative writers use the term, is it linear time travel? Yeah. What, whatever... Uh, you got told was going to happen in the future was always going to happen. Yeah, like the a lot of shows use that type of writing. It's actually very clever. Uh, Eccleston episode where he gets trapped in the church. Or the, I'm the oldest uh, thing in here. Come eat me. One of the episodes that you like as well, uh, the fires of Pompeii. I know going way ahead, the David Tennant ones. I'm sure you mentioned that was one of your favourite episodes, no. didn't you? The f- no, that no? wasn't me. In fact, I think that's one of my ones that I really don't remember much of. Really? When it comes to David Tennant... I could have sworn... Who my... was I thinking said that then? One of my favourite episodes with David with Tennant is when... Um, it's a lot of the ones with the master. Are they your favourites? Yeah, say? with right, David Tennant's enough. master, Sam. Yeah, uh, uh, John Sim, who yeah. portrays the master. Go on. And um, I like the one... I think it's a Christmas episode, and it's one of the first ones with Catherine Tate's... Donna. Oh, yeah. And he's drowning that spider thing. And he's got such rage and, like, almost enjoyment of doing this. Yeah, great acting. David Tennant just gets his acting chops out. This is a doctor. He's just had enough. He he, he is is done. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. Um, He really does get his acting chops out. But let's go talk back on movies because there's something. Obviously, Mad Max is. It's one of them films where it's a, a sequel made for a series that came out. Years and years and years before. Yeah. Now, obviously, people do like Mad Max. I respect your opinion. It's just wrong. I don't know it. I, I, <laughs> I, I no, feel really I mean, underqualified um, to. It, it's, it's an all right movie. It's not... I wouldn't watch it again, but I like the originals. But Mel, The Mel Gibson ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Mad Max, it's one of them. It's a, it's a sequel made for a series that came out 34 years before. And then you've got things like... Uh, one of the greatest sci-fi movies for me of all time is John Carpenter's... Is it John? Yeah, The Thing. 
Never watched that either. Well, you, no, I did. I watched. Right. I've watched bits of it, but never seen you, it from start you, to you finish. Need, you do need to watch. It. It, is, it is amazing. I will definitely uh, look sci-fi. it up. Just the special effects. Um, they've aged quite well. Um, and then that got a remake in 2011 called The Thing, which original name in there, lads. And that was a not remake, a prequel. So a prequel made like 30 years after the original. Yeah. Right. And they put in CGI, so eh, didn't do too well. And then you've got movies like uh, Indiana Jones. That got a sequel, what, 20, 30 years after? Yeah, I believe so. And that so. didn't do too well. So my point here is The Matrix. We're getting a sequel 20 years after nearly. I'm glad. I was I, I was genuinely wondering when you were going to bring that up. Now, my question... Will this be the exception to the rule and be a remake made 20 or so years after? Yeah. What, a sequel made 20 or so years after that is actually going to be any good. Will it be a soft reboot or will it be a genuine, legit continuation? Now, but with The Matrix, when it was first made, the internet was in its like infancy. So a lot of the ideas and things they had to like give a light brush to. And you go back and watch it now with like modern sensibilities, you understand it a lot better and everything they're trying to do. Yeah. So I think The Matrix is one of the films that works a lot better now. Like social media and vr and we discussed this very briefly on our phone calls um earlier on this week because funnily enough listeners we actually got the news that uh um the matrix the what what are the name the the sisters uh, i can never pronounce the name wachowski sisters um or something to that effect that people were planning basically to do a follow-up to we, the matrix they, they've done a remake of the original they've updated the cgi and the sound have and they yeah see i didn't even know that for so, the 20-year anniversary wow well, yeah. so it's <laughs> just a bit um but i remember i remember when the very first matrix got released i was only a very i was only a kid at the time but i do remember it i when it comes to Matrix, one of my favourite things is sitting there watching it with my dad. Ooh. Weren't even that long ago, maybe 10 years ago. And my dad sits there and he goes, I love this film. I just wish I could understand it. <laughs> it is really funny because I, I actually remember I was having a very, very similar conversation with my mum and dad. And my dad, to this day, bearing in mind... This film is 20 years old, or the trilogy are roughly approaching the 20 year mark. The very first Matrix it is 20 years old, anyway. But the trilogy in itself is nearly 20 years old. My dad, to this day, cannot understand it. Understandably so. A lot of people that I know on a personal basis doesn't have the Even first the clue what the Matrix is at so all when, about. So when they made the movie, it's got all this, like deep heavy philosophical meanings and that in yeah so all the cast and crew uh all the actors and everything were given big books of like philosophical stuff yeah. to read through yeah. so they they knew what they were doing which uh yeah. no one can remember except one person the only person from the matrix who 20 years on can still talk about heavy f- like philosophy based stuff and like you know what is real am i if if you go if you dream and you're in your dream, you're a butterfly, and then you wake up and you're a man. Which one are you, the butterfly? Like, it's a weird mind boggling really? Yeah. The only person that can remember it all off the top of his head and enjoys it is Lawrence Fishburne. I was going to say, I bet. He's a him, very yeah. intelligent man. Yeah. Wow. But also, um, I'm shocked that Keanu Reeves doesn't. Because like, he seems like someone that transcends humanity. I mean, he obviously, he's an immortal man. <laughs> so he's got a lot of time. He still looks like he's in his early 20s, no, 20 years he, old. He has aged. Oh, yes. yeah. um, but obviously, he's How coming How old is back. he now, Keanu Reeves? He's, like 50, he's in his 50s. He doesn't look it. I'm sorry, but to this day, I know I'm sort of going, going along what everyone else is saying. He does not look like someone in his 50s. But he takes care of himself really well, doesn't he? I yeah, mean, I Paul so. Rudd. Yeah, true. I don't even have to say any more. I, d- I don't even have to. He is the. You know when Marvel take like pictures of people's face so they can DCGI them. Yeah. Like you have like in uh, Captain Marvel, you have like a younger yeah. um, Phil Coulson and a younger Samuel L. Jackson, and in other movies you had like all that magic CGI with like um, oh, who plays Ego? Ooh, ooh. 
Uh, an, a, a younger, um, a younger is. Michael Douglas. Yeah, I know who you're referring yeah. to. I can't remember, but go on. Paul Rudd's the only one they haven't taken any like CGI of his face because he hasn't aged. Okay, now. Oh, do you reckon? I know this is just a anyway. Question, back to the Matrix. Go on, back to the back, Matrix. Back to Matrix. So, the Matrix. I think now, and directing it and writing it, only one of the sisters have come back. Really? Yeah. Bloody hell. Um, so how come they both not come back? What, just one? I, I honestly don't know. I don't think anyone does. Maybe they just wash their hands with it. Political intrigue, everybody. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but, so at least you do have an original writer. Yeah. And, no, I, I mean, that, as far as I know, they're really close. So, you know, if you're yeah. writing the movie and your sister is one of, like, your best friends. Yeah. I mean, these brothers grew up as brothers and then became sisters. So. Yeah, I bet that's... Interesting. I, yeah, and they've got two other sisters as well. Like that, they're obviously they're going to talk to each other and like, hey, I don't know what to do in this part of the script. Well, have you tried this? Oh yeah, that would be good. So I think unofficially they're both going to be writing but it. But anyway, the, the, there is no disputing. I always get Wachowski. Did I pronounce that? Yeah, right? I think it's Wachowski. The Wachowski sisters are un, undoubtedly, undeniably the greatest minds. In cinematography history, they have to be. No, because they have a, to be. They've got to be up there. A lot of the other stuff they've done has flopped. Yeah, true. But I, and I, I think, I, I, and that, I do acknowledge they, that. But I mean, to right, they, right, right, go on, they're, go on. they're really good. Right. But the problem is, the stuff they write goes over most people's heads. Like even that's precisely my point, though. It's like sorry to cut people off there. Could it be, and I hate to use this because I, I know a lot of people may not, potentially might not get it. Do you reckon it could be like the Vincent Van Gogh effect? That people didn't appreciate a particular work until later on? Uh, no, because I think I mean, it was I know just, Matrix, I, I, obviously, I know the Matrix was successful anyway. Yeah, but, but when it when it came out, the internet was still like young, so people don't know. I think it's the same with Ghost in the Shell, yeah. the anime. A lot of people understand all that better now than we did so a new movie they can tackle to and a lot of things they they were advised not to do like for those who don't know the original matrix was supposed to uh neo was supposed to be trans he was supposed to be a man I believe so yeah a I man believe that. he was supposed to be keanu reeves when they enter the simulation but a woman when he's out yeah so it's it's a, like inhabiting another body so I but, think they might do that now, or they're not scared. And but you got to think as well. Uh, sorry to cut you off there a little bit, but you got to think as well the type of minds that devised the the entire concept, the the, the type of characters that are in the Matrix. I consider myself a very, very incredible amateur. All they did is take writer. Tron and put guns in it. Let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a lot more like yeah. advanced than that. But, yeah. <laughs> but I, I love the first Matrix. I love, well, I love all the Matrix. But the, after the first, they sort of gel into one movie. I, I've me. always, it's funny you should say that because I've always, are you aware with the? Uh, you probably are with the great streaming show. That's. Uh, obviously sort of dominated mainstream pop culture, especially the last few years or so, called Stranger Things. Yes. I've always described that. that X-Files meets Goonies. See, that's <laughs> um, that's what a lot of people say, including yeah. my mum, who's yeah. a big fan of the show. She's like, I love it. Why? It's it's slightly horror. You're not normally into that. Oh, because it's like watching the Goonies. It is in, in a certain way. And it has that, very, very, that vibe. To, to do the point... Any time the Goonies is on TV or the first Jurassic Park, yeah, my mum will find it. You're joking. And she will watch it. I have heard, hey, you guys, <laughs> more times than any other phrase in my life. <laughs> oh, dear. Why, did your mum reenact that scene or something? No. Or... <laughs> it's just she's always watching the Goonies. Yeah. The Mummy or Jurassic Park, just because those are the three movies that are always on and she just happens to really like the movies. Yeah, they are so good films. I know they're movies off by heart. I think Goonies, I'd say, it, it started to grate on me if, like, if I kept seeing that on the telly. I like yeah. the film, but that is... Yeah, it does. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> it really does. Oh, it does. <laughs> I can imagine Goonies starting to grate on me a bit. Jurassic Park... 
not, see so much. I've Ju- got a soft Jurassic spot for Park Jurassic is one of them. It's aged exceptionally well. But it Jurassic has. Park again is another of the same movies in the vein of uh, <laughs> Indiana Jones and Mad Max and The Matrix and The Thing and Robocop and all. They get a sequel yeah. 20, 30 years after. Yeah. Like Jurassic World. Yeah. And which I thought was incredibly good. The first one. The second one. Fallen Kingdom. Mm. They was trying to take it to a certain direction that, I, yeah. that might not have paid off. But I think they were still brave in taking it to that direction in the I first mean, place. But go on. At least they didn't go some ways where, like, over the years there have been, like, yeah. human dinosaur hybrids <laughs> in scripts and things like that. No, thanks. Oh, wow. But yeah. <laughs> back to The Matrix. Do you think it's going to do well, this new one? Now that people understand the internet more and the concept of, like, realities and trans people being in it, possibly, and um, yeah. transcending uh... your consciousness and new things. Because don't forget, The Matrix ends, yeah. and it does have kind of a clear ending. But also, it there's a famous scene in the last movie where they're all having a party in Zion, and Morpheus stops, looks, and he says, is this real? Suggesting that he thinks he's still in a simulation. Wow, yeah. What the hell? Yeah, he does right at the end of Revolutions, yeah. doesn't he? Interesting. And um, don't forget, Smith is able to enter that world, even though he's only entering someone's consciousness, well, it, it, but he is just a system. It's funny you should bring that up, because my I think my question to you was... Um, after the ending, we we is it an established fact now that Keanu Reeves will be in the fourth yeah. Matrix? Now, for those who have watched Revolution, will know exactly what I'm talking about. In one of the ending scenes in Matrix Revolutions, the big baby face alien, as one of my friends called it, yeah, uh, robot, not alien. Neo dies. Oh, that's the impression I've always well, got. He's carried away, and then it goes into like the Matrix vision, and everything's green, but he's still gold, so possibly, yeah, he's still alive. Do you reckon from from a completely speculative perspective, do you reckon he died or as a fan, as a viewer, do you reckon he survived or do you reckon he died? It's one of them. I wanted it left open so they could make another one, but I'm not sure I want another one. But I also do want another one. Yeah. I want it to be good. I yeah. don't want it to be like, um, not naming any names, Robocop, where they make a movie or try and reboot a franchise and it's just horrible. Completely agree, definitely. But anyway, we are nearly reaching an hour here, so we're going to spend 10 minutes uh, sort of like wrapping up. And 10 minutes wrapping up, that has got to be the uh, biggest ending sequence I've ever heard. Well, you know what I mean, start winding down. I mean, well, when you, I say wrapping up, you've not seen me do presents. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible. Yeah. Like, I'm, it's easier for me just to get like coloured sellotape and wrap everything up. Bloody hell, yeah. So... I was going to ask you, actually, just out of pure uh, pure curiosity, have you had a good week? I have, actually. I've been quite surprised that this, as a podcast... Yeah, doing, I wanted to bring been, that up, actually. Yeah, go on. Like I said, like, we've, we've talked before, and when it started going over, like, the 2030, Irvine's turned around on the phone and said, like, you know, I kind of knew this would be better than other things he's done solo... And I, I always you were quite not I'm a, dismissive about that. I'm a I'm glass a... half empty, empty kind yeah, of person. You're, you're a glass half full. I'm a lot. Uh, I don't want to jinx myself and think this is going to be amazing. <laughs> um, but at the same point, I'm, I quite enjoy doing this because this is just an hour a week where I t- don't have to think about work. I don't have to think about home, and I don't have to think about work. I say. I said work twice because I double don't want to think about it. Yeah, like, <laughs> you, we're, we're just here. You get any impression? You, are you not enjoying your work life? Where, where, where's birth. the official <laughs> company <laughs> sheet? I love my job. <laughs> oh dear. But no, um, no, it's good. And so, how did you feel? Because I, I, I remember uh, saying to you as well. Um, I know it sounds really bizarre, but we actually said, you know, one of the first, it's not a major stepping stone. But I rang Tom. When we reached 50. I was going to bring up when we reached 100 views. When we reached 100, I was actually and shocked. I, yeah, I was. Because, obviously, Irvine's got control of the channel. I just, like, record it on my laptop, essentially, with and upload it. And, uh, obviously, last week in the podcast, you said about Spotify. We are sorry we couldn't figure out Spotify for the first couple of days, but we got it up and running now. So if you want to save data or if it's easier, 
you can listen to it on Spotify. We will leave it in the link for Spotify and Anchor underneath. Um, or you can listen to it on YouTube. But Definitely. yeah, no, I was, I was actually gobsmacked. Like a hundred people, possibly. Well, it's probably like a couple, like watching a bit, like watching half an hour and then coming back watching another half an hour. But still, that's amazing. And I know uh, we've had comments of uh, people wish I'm louder, so I'm basically screaming now. Yeah. I just have a quiet voice sometimes until I get going. Um, our sound quality in some places weren't too good, so you could hear the wind. I mean, we were going to do it outside today, but it decided to rain. Um, I quite like doing it in here, if I'm honest. Do you like it? Yeah. Basically, for, for the listeners that have probably got that confused expression on the faces, it probably happens more when I speak. Um, no, basically, we are Don't doing... Don't judge him, he's northern. Fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> but anyway, we, we did, the as Tom just explained, the first episode in, in my back garden. Today, we're doing it in my bedroom. So... Like, do you prefer it here, or are you liking it outside? Honestly, as long as our sound quality is better. And um, last time we cut a lot, and we had breaks for sandwiches and all sorts, um, and tea. It feels like we did today's run a lot more smoothly. Obviously, we took tea breaks. We're British. You can't (laughs) can't, can't go out without tea. But um, we haven't this time, actually. No, not at all. We We had a quick brew before we started. Yeah, and luckily, I know I've had comments for this, there was no spider incident this time. Um, <laughs> I've had people saying, we wish you left the spider incident in. No. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know. No, no, I can understand that because Tom cacked his pants, bless him, didn't you? I did not. <laughs> it, it was... It, listeners, it was not a scream. It was a war cry. It was a high-pitched war cry. Oh dear, that was funny. Oh. I was hoping, actually, you know, because that your spiders would come out of everywhere. I, 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 I was gonna say before we go, it's entirely up to you. We can uh, leave our listeners to wait another week if that's your choice. But you could entertain the listeners with because you're very good at um, remembering certain stuff. Entertain our faithful, faithful audience with a tale from college before we go. Oh, I think we've got time for that. Have we? Go on, yeah. so is uh, anything you can remember that... Uh... Oh, college time. College time. Because <laughs> I only bring it up because the amount of times we, we've talked about college on the form. So I just thought it might only be fair if we include the audience in uh, our well, listeners. Well, college, college for us ended up all right because we ended up in a class of like 30 people that got whittled down to about six. Yes. So we, the tutors had a lot more time, which means, unfortunately for them, they got to know us <laughs> on a personal level sometimes. Um, well, there, was, there was one time in college where Irvine was... Um, he wanted to do, like, some improv acting, and... Uh, Don't tu- remember this. Our tutor, Michelle, was like, well, fine, um, <laughs> if you want. And she, she was behind it. I think it was for, like, wrestling. You wanted to, like, do a promo, so you wanted to see if your improv oh, acting was I good. I remember this. So yeah. I sat down, and he... Uh, I think it was your idea, and you were like, right, pretend you're, like, uh, a shopkeeper, and I'm trying to return something, and I'm going to be quite irate. And I was like, oh, right, okay. So we're in this letter. I'm sat behind this table. Everyone's watching. Tutor's there, smiling, because, you know, she, she quite she enjoyed it. She knows some at gold and we'll go about to... <laughs> and Irvine took his shoe off. And he <laughs> put it on the table and he went, I bought this from your bloody store! Or something like that. And he got right in my face to the point where every time he started talking, I started backing away until I was a good six, seven feet away from where I started. And then the tutor just turned around, Michelle, brilliant tutor, she, you know... He's only pretending you don't have to keep backing away. Yeah, but he's scary. <laughs> and then you stopped. You're like, all right, do you want to swap? And then you were supposed to be the customer or the um, person behind the till, and I was supposed to be the customer. And I came in, and your shoe was still on the table, so I banged it down. And instantly, you burst out laughing. So the only thing that popped in my head naturally is, I bought this parrot, and it's dead. <laughs> and you were like, Was no. it that much of a believable performance, though? Yeah, <laughs> it was it was quite good. And then all I remember doing is like the go to John Cleese, Monty Python. It's dead. <laughs> Bang it on the table. Um, oh wow! 
Sorry I got a bit loud there, but yeah. Uh, I thought you were going to bring up the bonbon story. The bonbon story can wait. There, there will be time for the bonbons. Right, we, I, I suppose we better wrap this yeah, up, haven't we? Try and keep this to an hour. So <laughs> I hope we sound better this time and uh, you have enjoyed. And um, I was going to say, actually, I, I, I kept reminding myself a big thank you as well to Tom's brother who's done a lot of work for us. I yeah. think he needs to get a mention. Yeah, here. my brother is... My younger brother, Connor, is the one that's done all the done the artwork for us. Um, so a big thank you, Connor, big if you're shout listening. shout out. Thank you so much, Connor. I, I know we haven't officially met, but seriously, I, I, I hope you realise how much I genuinely appreciate how much work you've done for us. And thank you, I genuinely believe... I know we've just started, but the amount of success we've already enjoyed and experienced, I... Be, I Firmly believe it would it wouldn't be the case if uh, you wasn't there to help us yeah. with the pre- presentation and, and just up. thank you to everyone who's listened and a- shared. And absolutely, thank this, you. This is officially number one. So if you've listened to the end, congratulations! Uh, you've managed to reach like over an hour of us. Um, thank you to everyone that share some more. Like, absolutely, and of course and we really appreciate comments. And if you like surprise, like. Su- there. Like I can't even say it. It's so like cringy. Go on. Please subscribe to us. <laughs> we need it. Absolutely, but it's true though. Yeah. If you enjoy listening to us, we intend on uploading, or we're going to try and upload at least once a week. Aren't yeah, we? every every Saturday. We're uh, actually uh, doing uh, this Saturday because I couldn't yesterday. Yeah, so we're going to try and do it once every weekend. So, but please, yeah, I know so many people say this to the point of subscribe, redundancy. Subscribe, like, ding the bell, ding that bell, ding Go that on. bell. Please subscribe to us and thank. Thank you for listening. Thank Touch you for... your bell. <laughs> We've just lost half our subscribers now. Yeah, <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can cut that bit. I yeah. won't, but I can. Thank you so much for listening, and as always. I've been Dancing Bear. And I've been Koala. And thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Take it easy.